Greetings, dear ones. I'm Maitri Libelul, and this is Sunday Afternoon with Maitri. It's quarter to seven, but it's close enough. <laughs> I have been kind of painting nonstop the last few days. And yesterday, I ran into a rough spot with a painting I was working on. And I'll uh, tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. I wrote a whole blog post about it, and the link will be below. But years ago, back to 2013, I started painting a series of what I called the 100 Ladies, the 100 Ladies Project. I've talked about this before because I was just very shyly stepping in at 59 to drawing and painting. I started actually drawing with pastels and then into watercolors and, you know, kind of worked my way along. But the thing is, I did not know how to draw at all. I certainly couldn't draw anything that looked real. And so I, I would just draw heads of women, the heads with the hair, the facial expressions, maybe a little bit of background. And yes, my parakeets are being loud in the background and I apologize. So I did these ladies and they all had a story. When I drew the lady, she had a little story. And some were touching and some were funny and some were sad and all different kinds of stories about all different kinds of women. And I did that for five years. And up and just off and on, but up until the time I started drawing and painting Maisie a couple of years ago. So I'm working away at Maisie's World, which the, were just originally paintings and now are working toward a book about Maisie's World. I've talked about that a lot in these videos. And last week, I showed you the crazy painting I did in my sketchbook. I wasn't thinking about anything, but just having fun. And it wasn't until, and I did the blog post, and I shared the pictures of the process all the way through. And the next day I thought, those are the hundred ladies. <laughs> it's like, they're back. <laughs> I had always thought the 100 ladies were a stepping stone to Maisie. I never intended to go back to doing them again. But I've come to realize in the last week that while the ladies did lead me to Maisie and there were some iterations uh, between the ladies and Maisie that kind of led to Maisie as well. I did Tallulah in Georgia. Tallulah was an alter ego for me in Georgia, was an alter ego for my little pug that I lost in one of my three pugs I lost in 2018, all senior little babies. And then after the pugs died, I, I couldn't do that any, I couldn't draw her anymore. And then Molly came and then Maisie came but I drew the three, a, a picture, geez, I, I wish I, you could see it. It is up there on the wall behind me at the top. I, I, I did share it on social media. The one below is the one I shared last week. And the one above are three of the 100 ladies who will be in the book with Maisie. They will be her imaginary friends and kind of spirit guides, guardian angels, muses, whatever. They will be very real to her, though other people can't see them. And so then through the week, I, I realized that the 100 ladies had just kind of stepped aside to let Maisie come through, but they weren't gone for good, and they were part of Maisie's world. And then... I had another idea. The 100 ladies, I really believe, 
They're all funky, wild characters. I really believe that they're here to help Maisie. Both the three that are in the Maisie book, in the story with her. And I thought, if I can draw and paint and sell the paintings of a lady, the Hundred Ladies Project, each painting would be $100 and would come with a story like they used to. So when you get the painting, you also get a story included. They're eight and a half by 11, really heavy duty watercolor paper. I'm gonna show you the one that I did in just a minute, but I have to tell you, I started her. And the lady went okay, but then I had like a text box on the side because so she'd have a little something to say that kind of gives you an idea what her story will be about. Well, the first go at the text was a nightmare. After that, oh, paint it all over it in white and let that dry. Then I painted it sort of the peachy pink color that it was meant to be again. And I had to go at the second lettering. That wasn't right either. In the middle of the first two iterations <laughs> of the lady is named Delphine. And in the midst of doing Delphine's painting or, you know, doing the text for it, I wrote a post to my patrons at Patreon. And I said, I had one rule for painting from the beginning, way back when. Only one rule. And it was critical. And it has kept me painting until today. And that was whatever I started, I had to finish. Now that's really important because the first time you're doing something and it doesn't feel like it's going well and, and you give up. You cast it aside, you tear it up, you throw it out and you don't, you do something else or you get frustrated and you don't paint for a while. And But every time you let yourself do that, there will come, you're leading yourself to the day when you just won't do it at all anymore. If every attempt of a painting not going well, and this would be true of anything in life, you quit, you'll never finish a painting. <laughs> so I had to finish it. Uh, if I made mistakes, I did my best to correct them. I did my best to finish the painting. Some were sellable, some were usable, some were not. But in having to keep going, I learned more because I'm self-taught. I have no, I have no art training. S didn't go to art school didn't major in art in college. I'm completely self-taught. And I realized that, okay, when I start something, I have to finish it. it might, I might not really like it. I might not be happy with it. But in finishing it, I'm building a ground that will help me keep moving forward. Well, that was put to the test yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> because by last night when I was doing it and it took I mean it was like all day because by the time the second one didn't go right either I had to paint the white layer I had to let it dry I had to paint the colored layer and this is gouache and I paint pretty thick so it took quite a while to dry and then I wrote the text for the third time and I looked at it and I cried. 
And I worked myself up into such a tizzy and I got so anxious. I wrote into my patrons at Patreon and I, I was just losing it. I was scared. I was frustrated. I didn't know what to do. I had worked all day from early morning to late last night and it still didn't feel right. And I mean, I, it was a pretty scared post I wrote to my patrons. Well, God bless my patrons. They not only su help support me financially, which I badly need and deeply appreciate, they support me in so many ways. Several of them wrote in right off the bat. The painting's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. We love you. Don't give up. You you know, calm down. <laughs> they said that very nice, but a few of them were like, you know, calm down. It'll be okay. I got so much support. And I went to bed. And I got up at 4 o'clock, you know, to use the little girl's room. And I couldn't go back to sleep. And I tried and I tried. And what I'm learning is, if I don't go back to sleep fairly quickly, I'm not going to, at least not for a while. And I will make myself a nervous wreck with that fitful, want to go to sleep, can't go to sleep. So I just flipped open the laptop, which was kind of next to me. And I thought I'll, I'll fiddle around here a bit until I can figure out what to do. So I went through my email to answer some email and I wrote to a dear friend who is also a patron and she's become like a sister to me and she wrote back. She was up then too. She had not even gone to bed yet. This is four o'clock in the morning. So we emailed back and forth a few times and she was so dear and she helped me so much. And I realized in that process that what I had done was put so much pressure on this one painting because it was the first of a series of paintings I hoped to sell. And the reason I hoped to sell them is because I want to start a little fun to build while I'm working on Maisie's book so that I can write the book and do the illustrations and I will have all the work together and finished but I'd like to find a book designer who can really put it together in a special way and that takes money and I don't have money <laughs> so I thought I will paint the 100 ladies and lady by lady from the 100 ladies project it would be $100 and they would get the painting and they would get the, uh, the story and I could start building a little fund for a book designer. So anyway, and this past week, my dear friend Katya, we've been friends for 40 years and she's also a patron in Patreon. And she said the other day something that a phrase that I hadn't heard in ages and it made me laugh and she said her friend used to always say fly your freak flag well let your freak flag fly well that is a saying from the hippie generation <laughs> and I talk all about that in my blog post today I give the whole explanation of what it means and where it came from and so in this painting Delphine is a little bit older lady and she looks in the mirror one day at her gray hair which she has straightened trying to be so appropriate uh, and trying to fit in and she wore the appropriate clothes and tried to do like all the right things and she still never fit in and her whole life she tried to do this and she was not happy and all of a sudden she looked in the mirror and she said, what the hell am I waiting for? And she stopped straightening her hair and she has it dyed purple and blue and there's still the gray in there and all her wild curls. And the painting says, Delphine wants you to know no matter how old you are, 
It's time to let your freak flag fly. And this is Delphine. And of course, the words are probably backwards <laughs> to you. But, and this is, the, the hundred ladies were really characters. And they, like I said, you, you'll get a, a bit of, uh, a bit of an inclination of what their story is going to be about. And then it will also come with, I haven't decided how I'm going to put the story, just a, a card, a little sheet of paper that I've done some art, arty things around. Um, but I realized that I was trying to make this text look like I thought it should. But the hundred ladies were always lopsided and cattywampus and because I wasn't, I didn't know how to draw. I drew my way. And I developed a bit of my own style with these crazy looking ladies and people loved the ladies and they loved their stories. And they were always lopsided because I didn't know how to draw a person, you know. And I looked at, this morning I got up and I looked at it and I thought, there's nothing wrong with that text. It's kind of cattywampus and lopsided, just like the ladies have always been. It sort of fit. And if it had been all straight and perfect looking, it really wouldn't have fit Delphine. And it certainly wouldn't have gone with her story about just cutting loose and being who you are. So I'm happy with her. She's a keeper. I'm already uh, beginning to do a little sketch for the next of the 100 ladies. I, I haven't even drawn her yet, but I know her name. Her name is Gloria, and I have a little inkling what her story is about. So that, that's going to really be fun. But the thing is, had I not long ago committed to the fact that if I started a painting, I had to finish it. I would never have made it through yesterday with Delphine. And what a shame it would have been. Maybe not to anybody else, but it would have mattered to me. Because I would have been giving up on myself on something that was important to me. And one of my dear patrons, a longtime friend of 20 years, wrote and she said, I forget how she said it, but it, she said, you're on target. She's known the 100 ladies for a long time. She said, this is a good idea. This is rock solid. You need to do paint and sell these ladies to help support my Maisie venture, which helps support me, but also gets a message out in the world. And had I not finished, had I not kept trying and trying and trying, not only Delphine's painting, but the whole 100 Ladies Project, which is revived. I've long since owned the URL, and it is, I'm creating a new page for it on my website. And I, I am going to do like groups of five or 10 paintings and then offer them. And my patrons will have the first shot at them. I will show them in Patreon and give patrons the first shot at buying one of the paintings. And then after the first week, any paintings that don't sell, I will put on my website and in social media and so I'm working that all out, and there's a lot in life that I can't do. I am, as I've said, a disabled senior citizen. I live on Social Security, so I don't have a lot of funds to toss around. I am physically disabled, but I've also lived a lifetime with mental health challenges. I'm bipolar. I'm agoraphobic. I have suffered 
with severe depression and anxiety and PTSD from long-term child abuse that was really long-term. It left a mark. So in a way, my life, in order for me to feel safe, grew smaller and smaller and smaller in terms of my relation to the outside world until I really became completely agoraphobic. Maisie is agoraphobic. <laughs> I'm pointing like you can see her. I'm pointing at my painting table where the current Maisie painting is. Um, but we have created, as I've said, Maisie's message is about creating the biggest and best and most joyful and meaningful life that you can for yourself, no matter what your limitations are. And all of the 100 ladies through the years, have they've all had some issue, something that was a little wonky or troublesome or difficult, and yet they prevailed. They, they just made it in the best possible way. And they touched people. And they touched me. And it seems fitting that right now they're back to help me, to help Maisie. And they are... I... They've always been imaginary friends for me. I, you know, if you don't get out much, paint your own friends. <laughs> That's kind of what I did with the ladies. And now they are back. And they are in Maisie's world. And I am painting. But I wanted to share with you both Delphine's painting and what went on with that yesterday. And how in staying the course, <laughs> going through a grueling day of stops and starts and do-overs, and finally finishing it, and just like working to the point of, I mean, collapse, I, emotional collapse, but being supported and lifted up by the wonderful women in my community on Patreon. And all the Patreon information is below. It's a women-only community. It uh, Patreon pa people become patrons at Patreon to support artists that whose work they like and who need the help and that they want to help the artists get their work out in the world. And but I also wanted it to be a community where I could support other women. I read five mornings a week or five days a week. I'm always reading a book to them and I write notes to them and I, I do all kinds of creative things and I share the creation of Maisie's art and my art process and all kinds of things in Patreon. And the women there, they're all so dear to me. It is really a lovely, lovely community. If you're interested, I'd love to have you join us. But those women last night, I'm not kidding you when I say I became so afraid. It's like I'm six, I will be 67 years old on April 30th. That's in three months. And it's kind of the art came late in life, and I'm self taught. And it matters a lot to me to do work that is meaningful to me in my life, can help other people in their lives. And it's the legacy I leave my, my children, I think, that no matter what obstacles, and they know that I have had a lot of obstacles in my life, and hard, hard times. And they've seen me struggle with my mental health issues. 
But what I want them to remember is that their mother kept on. That we can keep on. I'm very close to my children and their their spouses, my children-in-law and my grandchildren. And I want them to remember me as somebody who would keep trying and trying and trying until I finished it. After my house burned down, I made it through and started over again. After three hurricanes back to back in three years, one devastating in 2018, like so many others who had to make it through, I made it through. And there have been so many things. And for me, the mental health issues have meant that, that sometimes when I woke up in the morning, I was so afraid I could hardly even start the day. But here I am. I take good care of myself. I have a wonderful therapist I see every week. I thank God for the medication. And I am vigilant about self-care. But part of self-care is doing work that is meaningful for me in my life. What Patreon has done for me is not just give me some much needed financial support, but it's, it's, it's given me a home for my work. I've been writing and teaching and making art and doing so many things for decades. It is a place where all of my work has come together. And now the ladies are back. And the ladies and Maisie and I are really busy. And Delphine is here. You gotta love the hair, right? You gotta love the hair. Uh, I wish I had much hair. I, my, I, I have baby hair, always have had. I'd love to have blue and purple hair. <laughs> But I just wanted to share this with you. If you start a thing, finish it. If it's knitting something or crocheting or writing or drawing, painting, making art, whatever, you don't have to do it for a lifetime, but you have to finish that one thing. And then when you finish that one thing, you're motivated to do the next thing. And when you've done those, you keep moving forward. You build momentum. Emerson said, do the thing and you will have the power. And that's, that's what's happened for me. I did the thing. I painted it three times to get it right and I was still scared and my community lifted me up and held me up and supported me and encouraged me and sent me love and so much love and I want to send that to you all I want you to know that you're here for a reason that your life matters, that you have a purpose, you're here for a reason. And it's time to find your way to that thing. And when you do, you will find a kind of deep connection to what you're here for and your well-being and your peace of mind and your life will be all the better for it. So 
Anyway, I, f I feel like I'm babbling now, and it's about time to stop. Delphine and I, and Maisie and Daisy, and my little Molly, and the parakeets, Franny and Teddy, who fortunately have gotten a little quieter, um, we all send our love and wish you well. Have a wonderful week. All of my links will be below where you can find me on social media here, there, and everywhere. My website, whatever. God bless you.